So we're live. Episode five. Episode five. Wow. Holy smokes. We wow. just watched it for the first time. So I don't know about you guys. I don't watch any of it until the end, until it's all done. And yeah. It's available. Yeah. What'd you think? Yeah, I think the information uh, and from so many different people are going to, to be kind of an eye opener and some pretty, you know, some pretty hard and harsh words about what's happening at the county level. Um, some of them said by me, um, but I think they're real and I think it's going to get some attention and, uh, you know, all the episodes are getting a lot of attention, but I think this one's going to get uh, oh even more attention. Yeah. And the content here, I think is what's different, you know, no matter about the nice music and the, and the yeah. photography has always been excellent, but here we have some, some pretty hard content that really does need to be dealt with. And, you know, that's what I like about the red, white, and blueprint is that, you know, you guys are getting out information that otherwise just isn't getting out. Sure. You know, and, and uh, uh, why do you think that is? Why do you think our news agencies, our local journalists, even just citizens don't? Well, it's control. And so they're out. controlling what information goes out. You know, all you're going to hear really is what Mike Mangus says on the evening news, with it, which is sure. not much. Yeah. And I like Mike. You know, it's not, it's not a, a hit against him, but, um, you know, he has his bosses and you're not getting all the information. So here you're able, you know, in fact, when you guys really first started the project, I thought, well, you know, I, I just didn't put any value on it. Um, and, and I was considerably wrong because what I have been missing for a long time, I just assume people know what's going on, right? Sure. And they don't. And it's not that people are ignorant. It's just we're all working. We're all doing things. We're not closely following. Only a small handful stay for any of these meetings, whether it's at the city level or the county level. Um, and uh, Yeah, and I'll, I'll admit I can't go to every one of them. I wish I could, but right. you know, you life know, gets I, in the way. I mean, I, I had perfect attendance for 12 years at City Hall. You know, that's a hard thing to do. I made that commitment to do it, um, and uh, and I'm doing it again at the county level, but most people can't. We're working. I mean, <laughs> uh, we got we got things to do, and, uh, you know, but what I'm excited about right now, not just be, be, because this information is getting out, but we are seeing more and more people take an active role of what's happening here in Shasta County, and by the blueprint, getting that information out, um, it's giving some hope to other counties that, hey, you can, you can deal with your set of problems. We have ours. We have our lies. We have our inside deals. We have all this stuff that goes on, and every county is going to have similar things, maybe mm -hmm. different topics. Um, but there's a way first you've got to expose it, and Here, this is a way to do it. Here's the thing about this episode that, that should scare every citizen. You know, whether or not you're really paying attention to politics and those sort of things, is what happened after the interview with Nathan Pinkney's co-worker and reading the police report that a DA would still take up this case just because Carlos is part of this red, white, blue. They know they have zero, after looking at all that, they have zero chance of a conviction and they know it. No. And yet they still move forward with the case. That means if you're a political opposition to some of these people, they will use, I mean, that is communist stuff right there. Yeah. It really is. Oh yeah. And they, and that, that's, that's huge. Cause they're, that also shows who they'll use. Yeah. Somebody mm -hmm. that's that. And, and you wonder and why nobody wants to step up. Nobody wants to step up and do what we've done because of that. I mean, oh, that's yeah. a great deterrent. Are you kidding me? I, I wouldn't wish this on anybody that I like, you know, right. Just the stress and, you know, just the time, the the, you know, the the amount of emotional energy it takes to, to fight a case, it's horrible, you know? So good job. Yeah, you guys did it. But you're not going to win in court, I'll tell you that. Well, and gloves are off, I think. Oh, Since shit. That, and, and I'll say way more. Just episode. just wait until this trial is over, you know, and, and we win. Wait to see the stuff that I'm going to say. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, just, yeah, just wait for that because well, that's going to be really exciting. These people are so used to people not paying attention to what's going on. And, and now that people are sh like us and all these other great people that are shedding light on, you know, corruption and what's really going on. I think that um, for every um, ounce of stress they put on us, they're having a pound of it. You know what I mean? Sure. So, I mean, they are. I, and people on our side are getting stronger, more emboldened. And I feel like the courage meter's kind of gone up a little bit where, yeah. you know, even people that are close to me you know, a few months ago weren't saying anything. Even with the, the censorship? They, they, they were on the neutral train, right? They're like, yeah, I support you guys, but, you know, you got to remain neutral for my job or for this. 
Now people are seeing the seriousness of what's happening. Yeah. A lot of this thanks to COVID, right? Coming back again. Yep. And that, like we said earlier, it's like whack-a-mole, you know? We beat it here, it just pops up somewhere else. It's going to keep popping up for the rest of our, our lives probably. Right. Yeah. You know, but that tells people, hey, you know what? This is worth fighting for. This is something you're going to have to address. Yeah. And how many people did we talk to over the last couple of years now that did not want to address the real issues? And I think that's what we're doing here. And that's why people are actually becoming more Well, and there's substance, substance to it now. We were all saying yeah. it, and it was like, oh, they're just spouting stuff, you know? Yeah. And even like Rickert tries to say, well, the lies. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, no. Three, 350 million mm -hmm. to 600 million. Mm -hmm. Look at the time frame. Look at the population. Yeah. That Doesn't was, make that, sense. That was That's super huge. interesting that what Trish Clark had to say, you know, about how they used to look at mm -hmm. county budgets and comb through them. And to now, it's just like, like ten, you said, ten minutes, ten minute little discussion, you know, and just rubber stamp it. That's and that's how, all by design. How, how many pages was that? It's six hundred, six hundred pages, six uh, hundred million dollars. So each page worth a million, million dollars. dollars. <laughs> and, Holy uh, cow! I'd like to Man. just have a few of those pages, actually. Um, <laughs> no, but it was pretty shocking uh, because even at City Hall, we'd take a whole day to go over the budget and hear absolutely nothing. And so, you know, the audacity of Mary. Uh, to point out, you know, certain individuals that that didn't comment. It they've been commenting, Mary, for the last year. You just haven't been listening. Yeah, sure. you didn't. You didn't and, listen uh, about all these other components right. I mean, of how you run the county. Well, she how, thought we were all crazy. Now? You know. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but but she made no comment. Mm -hmm. She didn't talk about herself here on this budget, right? She, we don't pay the people sitting out in the audience to do this. We are paid. To scrutinize that budget, we we own that budget. That's our budget. We manage that mm -hmm. budget, and nothing from these, nothing from the majority of the three supervisors, not one peep. Which also tells me that in the last few years, they've been doing this. Now, what does it mean when you're not going to look at the budget? Mm -hmm. It means that you're letting the bureaucrats within run the show. And I don't even think Matt Pontus has a control on the budget because every time we ask him a question, he always has to ask a department head. Mm -hmm. And so we're super lacking with quality leadership. That's what it shows is there's no leaders here. Oh, well, he has some help now, doesn't he? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that's there Got we go. Help. Exactly. <laughs> he picked the perfect person to perpetuate what is going on, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, we all expect government to, to be good, to be better. And this is what we're exposing. This is what you're exposing. You're starting to see a, a government that is really running – um, without without the scrutiny of a board, without the scrutiny of the public. No oversight. No oversight whatsoever. There's now it's a sizable amount of money, and we're talking $600 million. No accountability. Now, what are you getting for that? I mean, are we really getting $600 million? Worth, you know, one of the other things that come up the other day, and Eric Magrini did mention it, probably a mistake, but he said we have budgeted 240 positions that are unfilled, but yet we're already at an all-time high of 2000 for, uh, two uh, two thousand one hundred employees, but yet they have budgeted two hundred and forty more. Now, mm -hmm. if you take the pay and benefits of two hundred and forty positions, you're talking about twenty five million dollars, let's say, in that range. That's just sitting out there. Um, it's a nice way to hide a little bit of money. I mean, it's unheard of when you're already at a very high amount. But how weird was it that a sitting supervisor? would call out Alyssa McEwen for not speaking to the budget. Didn't that seem weird to you? It's like, I don't, hey, but I don't I, get it. I, 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 it. It's ridiculous on her part, but it is a show of where the power is starting to lean. Exactly. I love that, that part. part of it is. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Alyssa. <laughs> but, 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 but Mary's falling apart. I mean, Mary is completely coming unglued right yeah. now. Did you, you see that her behavior? And Modi's like, Ooh, dude, what are you doing? Down. She was like waving around in her chair laughing and just... I mean, it was like a, what are we watching here? Yeah. It's like high school band sitting back there or what? It's like some high school gossip. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> so so today's actually a pretty special day. You know, it's Woody's birthday today, right? Oh. Woody. Oh, man. <laughs> 30, 35 years old today. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm the oldest guy in the room now. Barely. Get my <laughs> get my so, senior senior discount at Denny's now. I'm 55. So. Moon's over I, I, my hammy. I turned around in court today. At the settlement conference, you know, I said, Woody, man, what a way to spend your birthday, you know, <laughs> sitting in court with me, you know, but, you know, I, I appreciate you being there. And uh, I wouldn't have spent it know. any other way, man. So what, what's your birthday wish, if you could have it? Um, well, you know, I sp pretty much spent my birthday court here. We're going to go to the, the uh, 
protest for the medical workers. And that's like an this. important thing, by the way. We should talk about that for a second. This yeah. medical Be, protest. Being a patriot, though. That was yeah. the best thing about being on your birthday was being a patriot. That's it, man. If we can get something done around here, I'll skip all my birthdays. <laughs> yes, <no. laughs> well, you know, I said earlier on, you know, this was, you know, what we went through last year and into this year was a warm up and this, they're already at it again. And, and I said before, we cannot allow let this happen and here they're already doing it again. This is yep. a level of control. Uh, they tested it. They did their test. Uh, it's like a rocket. They did their first test and now they want to go up yep. and uh, we yep. can't let it happen. And so uh, today in Shasta County, we're going to push back. Um, I just get a sense. I can just feel this county wanting to close down around itself. Yep. Um, I'm pretty good at opening up the boardroom. I'm mm -hmm. pretty good at taking down yep. plexiglass. But it needs to be beyond me. The public needs to start coming forward and saying, we're not going to let this happen again sure. in our county. Hey, and all these groups need to stick together, right? We've talked about it before, you know, what happened in Germany where they went after the socialists first. And, yep, then, yep. and these, so it doesn't matter if you're a medical worker or not. If you work at Walmart, you should be there for the medical there. workers. Yeah, that, because they, and the medical workers should be there for you when it comes the, time to protect you. They're just you, the you first know? ones to get hit right now. And, yeah. and, when, and if you don't want it to come to your job, you better show up now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and my wife and I have had extensive conversations about it because she's a nurse and her job is now on a chopping block, you know. And she, they, they said, hey, if you're not by, I can't remember the date they gave, sometime in September, you're not vaccinated, you know, you have to be tested twice a week. And if you think about this logically, how are you going to, logistically accomplish that how are you going to test there's i think how many employees at the hospital like well, let's say there's two thousand okay there might be more it might be less 35 percent right now are vaccinated that means that 65 percent of your employees are saying no to the vaccination mm -hmm. okay they don't want the jab so what happens when 65 percent of your employees walk out what happens when they say no we're not doing that but what happens when they say fine we'll test once a week or twice a week. How are you logistically going to test that many people? Over a thousand people, you know, get the results back in time for them to fill their shift. Well, it, it can't happen. It's free to the hospitals to do that because of the back end funding from the federal government and who's behind this whole power play. Sure, but I'm, I'm talking about time-wise. So, logistically, I know, I know though, why. how do you do but the whole shift the coming on the, with the test? The instant you know? test, yeah. And it, then it, what do you do with half of them that come up positive because they all work together? It's the same yeah. reason. Yeah. It's, it's the just, same thing they do with ammo, okay, here, or, or buying a gun. They try to make it so freaking hard and tax it so hard make it such a pain in the ass that you just – you know, it, they make it much harder than it should be. So, so finally, you just say, fuck, I'll, 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 I'll get, get, get the shot. You know, yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, now to go buy a hard. box. Uh, I would say it's still okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. But what I'm saying is is they, they use those tactics and make it as difficult as they can to they deter. Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to I'm gonna be honest, if you got to do a background check to go buy a box of 50 ammo, I'm not going in there no more. I'm, well, I'm going to. That's the whole point. I mean, they're, they're, they're making it harder every year. We're allowing them to do it. We're allowing it every year, and ammo right now is the case, but guns, but soon it'll be more and more and more. You know, in Sacramento, we know they can pass anything that they want, and they are, and they'll do more because we're allowing them to do more. We're sure. not standing up and saying that enough is enough. Now, that's what we're doing in Shasta County, finally. Exactly. You know, and yeah, there'll be, there'll be a penalty to pay, and it's called retaliation, and right. it's real. And uh, when you speak up, they try to come after you. Carlos, you know well about it now. So, and, so and you Alyssa think, knows about it, right? Yeah. You, and, think, you think our, the newly appointed sheriff will stand up for us? Is he going to hold that line? Well, time will tell. You know, Michael Johnson, he's a good guy, you know, and I, I know everybody likes him, and, they know, he, and I really do think he's, he's a good chief. I've never heard one bad thing about never the guy. Never heard a bad thing. Yeah. So I know the guy's a good guy. The, the problem here is that he really did need to run the race and yep. earn it. Because when you listen to the public and you earn it, it changes your mindset. There is a big difference between a chief that's appointed and an elected sheriff. There's a big difference. And what we need right now in Shasta County is a real constitutional a people sheriff. Elected, elected sheriff. That's yeah, what yeah. we need. And I think the community needs that. You know, We need that as a constituents. Now, the thing about Mike Johnson is, is I think he's a great guy. I think he's done a fantastic job in Anderson. Exactly. I would have liked to have seen him turn down that appointment. It would have been great. The right way. I think it would have said a lot of He would have won. Him. He would have won. And, and he would have won. I would have voted for him. He would have won know. in June. Right. We're now I have to job. question that a little bit, right? Because, right. and I had a conversation with uh, one of the guys that worked for him, you know, who, who I know well. And he's like, no, I promise you, Carlos, you're going to like what he's going to do. You know, And I'm like, look, it's not about me liking it or not liking it. Is you can't trample 
on the Constitution, on due process, you know, just to get the guy that you want. Imagine if I came to you and I said, hey, man, this guy's going to be a really good governor, man. I, don't know, I promise you. You don't have to vote, you know. We're not going to have an election, but he's going to be, you're going to like him a lot, you know. There's no way we'd ever go for that. No, right. and, and what and what's his stance on the whole marijuana issue and what's going on in the county? The Do problem we know? is we had a whole bunch of questions, right? Everybody has their own set of questions yeah. that you would get to ask and vet and then hold them to it, hold them accountable. But we didn't get any of that, right, because there was no election. Where's the court of public opinion? Yeah. You know, I've ran many races um, and, you know, when you're in those debates and in those forums and things are asked of you, uh, you think about those, you know, pretty hard because you're going to do them. You know, the people are going to ask you about something and then you're going to do it and they'll hold you to it and said, hey, you said you were going to do this and you didn't do it. Right. And they and they have you. I mean, 100 percent. And so in that process, you really do listen and and you do the will of the people. And that's what was missing here. Um, we had the opportunity to do it. Uh, was it the money? You know, money tends to be yeah. very powerful, and I don't know what it was. Well, you know, the I, thing I think that was disappointed was Mike, he, he can still be the chief during this entire time. So it's not like he's not getting a salary. He still has good money coming in, and he could run a race. And what they're going to say is, well, he is going to run. He's going to run in 2022. But now he's the incumbent. And right. we know that in California, uh, 90%, 96%, I think, oh, wow. incumbent sheriff gets elected. You know, so you're giving the guy like, up. It's like, it's like hey, man, yeah, you're going to run, but you're going to get a head start. You know, right. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're all going to run this race, but get a 100 meter start no, on the right. next guy. It just doesn't work. And, and it put him in the company as the that episode, episode five so easily displays. You don't want to be attached to that process right. that yeah. just went on. And, yeah. and I, I think and, they did him a disservice. Yeah. You know, that's an injustice Absolutely. to Mike Johnson. Right. You know, now, now you're staying a guy who would otherwise have probably been one of the best sheriffs we've had. Yeah. So I had a question, Patrick, um, because in, in my past, but it wasn't an elected uh, chief. It was just a, an appointed chief. But we ran interims for over a year. Yeah. Would that have been possible for that board to do what they just did? Just oh, yeah. slide an interim in that's uh, already on payroll well, and, and, and he let was already him in run there. it, yeah. right? So can you do that, or are they held, they have to appoint someone? Well, they said he doesn't want to be sheriff, and that's a problem, right? Then you don't take the job as under sheriff unless you're ready to be sheriff tomorrow. Well, well yeah, he but he saying, could have stayed under, right? No. And you leave the top guy vacant. I think what you have to hey, do make is, him an interim. is... And then you wait for the next election. No, that's what I'm saying, but, yeah. but, but the, the under sheriff didn't want to be the acting well, interim find sheriff. somebody else. Yeah. Well, but well I think what he said, and I think you have to listen to the words closely, he said he didn't want to be sheriff, mm -hmm. which is okay. He's the under sheriff. He can carry out the duties and the roles, which he is currently doing right at this second, for the next year. Um, so we and legally, we can have an election coming up, and and we'll have an election coming up in March of or uh, June. Uh, June of next year. So the under sheriff is not going to be the sheriff. He's just going to do the role. He's going to carry out the roles of the sheriff, which is right. legal. Um, we do not have to have, I think the law says you can't have a special election. They say you shall appoint in a timely period, but there is no legal definition on timely. In less than a year, so clearly that's, we're okay. So that's huge. Those that want to say, well, we couldn't run a cost, this and that, that would have been your most cost effective. Right. You we take did. an employee, you don't fill the actual sheriff role. Right. And you make it work for a year because right. I would work for a department that did that multiple times. And clearly we had a lack of leadership for the last 18 months. So for the next nine or 10 months or whatever it is, um, you know, we can we can manage to get by and then restore what needed to be done from the very start is right. to have an elected sure. sheriff right. and somebody then is going to earn it. You know, and they're heated in this county. You know, these races, sheriff races, I mean, oh, they yeah. they put you through the paces. It's an important job. So, I mean, people do hound you mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we're going to hold you accountable to it. And we had the opportunity. Um, it was lost. Uh, we now have an appointment. The real question now becomes, does Michael Johnson become the sheriff that we want? And listen to the people, or is going to be beholden to that board? And that's the concern because we have some very powerful um, personalities on the board. Well, this county, sheriffs hang around for a long time. I mean, John Bama was, I believe, the longest tenured sheriff in California history. Correct. And then Basenko never lost. Correct. He just stepped down. So, I mean, when was the last time a sheriff lost an election in Shasta County? Does anybody know? I don't know. Uh, I don't well, know. you know, it, it, it went from Jim John Pope. Obama to, to Oaf um, to Pope to Bazinko. So no one's lost in that 50, 60-year period. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, sheriffs usually don't lose, you know, and they usually get the support of surrounding county sheriffs as well. You know, and they say there's 52 
counties, I believe. 58. 58 counties. Mm -hmm. All 58 end up going together. So if one sheriff goes, the rest go. We have 58 states, at least that's what Obama said. States. (laughs) 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 Yeah, well, and that's important, like, you know, like we were talking about. The the glue for people to get behind unseating these folks is the fact that they don't want to listen. Yeah. Flat out. They just do not want to hear the people. They want to keep their power. They just want to keep it in this small little circle. They want to keep you in the dark and just keep you happy and moving along your way. Stay busy. Don't look. We're taking care of it. And that's garbage. You have a bunch of people waking up, trying to yeah. track it down, trying to give their input, sure. and no one's listening. So you want your vote to count. Get these people out. You want your voice to count. Get these people out. That's mm-hmm. that's what we're seeing. Yeah. We have one guy that will come in and sit with us. Yeah. Well, and, so. and, and I don't like how they try and name their own replacements, not yeah. just for sheriff, but I saw yesterday. Les, Les did it. Les Baugh did it. You know, Baron Browning. Said, uh, yeah, well, as for me, I'm throwing my support behind Baron Browning, you know. It's like, hey, why don't you let us decide? Or wait till the, you step the, down the to then endorse somebody. Well, and the paper yeah. said uh, that Baron is the lone candidate now in that race that you're going to see in just a few weeks another um, constitutional mind candidate come forward. Right. Um, he'll do a press release. It is a he. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so you're going to have more than one person to vote for, which is going to be nice. And there will probably be others coming in as well. And I'd love to have Baron Browning coming in and talk to us. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I had a quote in the paper today um, asking if I was going to get behind Baron. And uh, I said I was not. And uh, David Benda asked me why. And I said, you know, at, at the beginning I had no uh, – thoughts really about it until I looked at Barron's web page. And then I look at the people that are that is on his committee. And it's all the bad actors that I've seen before. And people today want fresh, real people that are not part of this same old system. And so I think mm-hmm. uh, this gentleman that's coming forward is going to do just that. And I think he's going to do very well. I'm excited about that opportunity for next year and, of course, for what's happening this year. And uh, people are starting to, you know, they're starting to get involved mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, they're starting to come forward. And uh, keep in mind in the supervisor position, people that are looked at as incumbents haven't done well. Of the last four, three are gone, and yeah. I replaced one of them. And the guy I replaced had every endorsement out there in the world. So just because you see all these great endorsements, as Barron will get, I guarantee it, um, that don't I wouldn't hang your hat on that. Not this time. Not today. Not next year. I think we're seeing a revolution. Well, you know? endorsements from really the swamp are, are almost you know? like a deterrent now. You <laughs> yeah. Know? Like you, yeah. I'm you know, seeing like, more and more people listening to what we're doing, and you're right. You know, so so that, that's going to actually tag you in a in a bad light. I think. You <laughs> yeah. know, it's like, yeah. oh, you got their endorsement. Cool. Yeah. Well, Baron, the other guy. Baron's not going to win District Five without Cottonwood, and so that that'll be. Well, and the uh, gentleman coming forward is a Cottonwood resident. That's what I heard. Resident. So Weird. this will be fun, and he's going to make that announcement uh, in the next few weeks, so I'm looking forward to that. And again, others, you know, this is a free contest, so anybody yeah. can come out. These games, these contests, um, anybody can put their name in the hat as long as you live in District 5. And it, uh, you know what I'm thinking is maybe, maybe Mary Rickards wants to put her name in that race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What, what is the story there? Does she live in five or she bought a two million dollar ranch in five? Okay, but address is in she doesn't live there. So it's okay. Just Where's her address? Yeah. Oak Run or Whitmore or something? Or? Fall River. Fall River. Oh, or Fall MacArthur, River. MacArthur. MacArthur. Or gotcha. Something. Yeah. Some, somewhere. Yeah. I don't care where she lives. Say, it's not. You know, one uh, in the chamber. They mentioned something really quickly uh, <laughs> at, at the boardroom. Somebody mentioned about me and and Reading Electric Utility and and uh, things like this. And and I remember back, I fought hard to to keep rates low for the rate payers. It's really important to have low rates. And it was hard fought with the unions. They wanted you know thirty thirty four percent raise, and I was managed to get that down to three percent. And and I fight for the people. I fight for rate payers. I fight for the public trying to do good because I constantly are remembering you know the people and um, this particular person complained at me because some of the union employees weren't happy because they wanted a high raise but I'm trying to keep rates down and they kind of forgot the whole point of having your own public publicly owned utility and keeping the rates down mm-hmm. and uh, so I fought hard for that against against the odds it's easy just to go along with the flow I mean that's sure. that ends up happening not only at the city but at the county it's just easy enough to go along 
on the agenda coming up for tomorrow, we have an item C4, and it would just be easy to, to vote yes on that, but I'm not, and I'll explain why tomorrow. Um, you know, we have to look at the past and, and behavior of people in the past and, and call them out for it. We can't be bashful or shy about it. we got to call it what it is. And, um, you know, getting information out to the public is the key. And so that's why I think they, our opponents consider this room um, dangerous because they can't control the information. They've been able to do that up to this point. And controlling information is how valuable is that? Um, and we've allowed that to happen. And so by being able to do what we're doing here right now, getting information out to the public, um, they can't control that. And that is, that is very much a danger to them. Well, and it, they haven't listened, these supervisors. That's the biggest thing. They're not, and so anyone that's endorsed by those that aren't listening, you can get the pretty much same behavior. Yeah. So if you, if you want to be heard, and when was the last time it improved for business owners in this county, honestly? Yeah. When was the last time the billing department made it easy for you? Start asking these questions. When did your taxes go down? When did your roads improve? You know, those are the important things yeah. if you care about your yeah. community. And, yeah. and you have to reach your representatives to make those changes and make those moves. And they will not listen at this point, at least the three, yeah. right? So, Which so, then you don't have a quorum to, to make some action. And, so. and, and to be fair, there's great people that work within these departments. And I actually had a really good experience. A couple of weeks ago, we had an event at the house. We had the bull riding Patriots Challenge, which was amazing, by the way. And when I went to the county to pull a permit for it, it was the easiest process. I mean, they walked me through it. They helped me, you know, and, and they were really helpful. On a basic premise, I don't think I should have to pull that kind of a permit. But for what it was, I understand the people that were working that were trying to get the monkey off their back, that is right. Modi. And then there was that closed session, and you know, how they were going to deal with it, blah, blah, blah. But they really did bend over backward for me to make sure that it got done in, so, in time. Yeah. So, so I heard I that uh, Reading that. Chamber of Commerce was the biggest donor to Shasta Forward. Yeah, and what and they're the biggest, stance, but, but they are a donor, right? Well, okay. No, they're the biggest. They oh, they're $6,000. So, yeah. so I'm yeah. just wondering what business do they have You know, weighing in on this? And I mean, they're not a political group i'm just i'm just curious if anybody else well, has and, and if my that. business is in that chamber part of the chamber i didn't get a vote right did you get a vote no i mean uh, every so. business owner that that doesn't agree with that move should just withdraw yep. they should we should they yep. should start a different uh yep. chamber kind of right. a group well, what i find so disappointing um is that the county gives um the cares money uh, to yeah. the chamber, they pick who they get that money to. They pull off a couple hundred thousand for themselves, and now they're giving money to the majority of the board that got them that deal. Yeah. And that's just wrong. It's you dirty, know, disappointing. But in the, on a good side, when you take a look at the reporting period, uh, the Shasta Recall Group has reported monies coming in over ten times. They talk about black money or dark money. Shasta Forward, not one report until this last report. And what it shows is they've raised only a small amount of money. They're in debt. What it also shows is from a superb grassroots effort from tons and tons of individuals and homeowners and, and wives and grandmas um, that Shasta Recall has received in over $123,000 mm -hmm. in cash and growing. Um, it's showing the support right there. And you notice you didn't see a peep in the paper because they don't want to show that support. That's $123,000 cash in a small county. Um, great job that they did by raising funds, and they're not done. And have so, you noticed the richest guys in town are donating to Shasta Forward? They like things just the way they Red, are. Red, uh, Joe Wong. I'm disappointed, All man. these guys, multi really disappointed. And yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and why would they do that? Though? Well, people choose th their own selfish uh, uh, reasons over, over patriotism and freedom and liberty, you know? And um, I wanted to go back on, uh, we were talking about um, Redding, or uh, I'm sorry, Shasta Ford and dark money and all that kind of stuff and how transparent they are. You know, I went on there and I tried to uh, look at their mission statements and like who was supporting them. Mm -hmm. And the biggest uh, uh, supporter of them was what, like you read this whole thing and they say all the reasons. And then at the bottom of it, it says John Doe. Yeah. 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 Anyways. You know, John? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I like those, but they're hard to get tags for. They are. Uh, California is oh, almost man. impossible. Again, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If I'm a supervisor, number one, I'm saying, you know, go ahead. If you want to recall me, 
go ahead, let, let the people speak, right? Yeah. Number two, I'm giving you the reasons why you shouldn't. I'm making an argument. I'm making a case for myself and saying, look, this is what I've done. This is what I was up against. And they have not done that successfully anyway. No. What have they done? They've put us down. That's they all they've done. They try to smear us. And, smear and us. look, at the, whether you look at the dollars, the numbers of people, the, the traction of the documentary, all the power is starting to swing one direction here. Yeah. You have I, sitting supervisors address consist, exactly. constituents. And, and so now a warning to those that are stepping on that side. It was people apprehensive to come behind Blueprint. Oh, we're behind, but we can't go public. Well, if you're going public on the other side, mm -hmm. look where the numbers are. Sure. Well, look here. So look be, here. Be yeah. wary. Yeah. You, you got, know? You I got mean, it's coming. Richest, we, we can play too. Yeah. Dan, you got the richest elites and known domestic terrorists supporting Shasta Forward, and you got the ground, just small business, salt of the earth, grassroots, right. hardworking people. Supporting the recall, so yep. what is it? that that should tell you all you need right to know. Yeah. Well, and these so, numbers, they've always been there. We just didn't go get them. Yeah. You know, yeah. They've yeah. always been there, and we've known that. And yeah. so now we're starting to show those, and uh, yeah. it's a it's a good feeling. You know, these guys have been working hard, um, gathering signatures, um, certifying the signatures. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a great day when they turn those in. That'll be. Uh, the exclamation point to all the hard work that they've done. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we'll see, uh, we'll have an election where people get to vote who sure. stays and who goes. So I'm, I'm looking forward to an exciting year. And yeah. I'm looking forward to the governor's race as well. Yep, you know, coming up in less there, than a month. That'll be a pretty good deal. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We should yeah. throw a party for that. We should we throw should. a party for that. Let's have, let's have a party for that. <laughs> hey, that's, you know? there you go. Okay, real quick, we'll run the room. Governor, who? I haven't decided yet. Oh, I don't know. You know, I, I mean, I like uh, Kevin Kiley. I hope yeah. he could, uh, uh, I know he could make a difference if, if he could get there. But, you know, these races, and, I, and again, I've, on a local level, small level, I've, I've raised, I've done eight. Um, and the money is such a big deal, mm -hmm. right? And so I fear for Kylie because of, of the monster amount of money. Yeah. He's, the, he's a good guy, but. One minute. I'm not going to make a public announcement yet. I, I need to do a lot more digging because yeah. what how yeah. people appear on the the surface, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, is not always who they are. So I, I once it it's never the guy like first. It's always like the guy a month. That's why I'm going to keep my like, mouth shut right okay. now. Yeah, that's, that's why. The guy, Woody. Well, the biggest thing is we we all have to coalesce around one guy. Yeah, we right. don't need six of them out there for sure. Well, that's but there's a school of thought. Did, that... did you say Jenner? What did you say? <laughs> oh my gosh! No, <laughs> they, they, they do course. say, and, and and they've kind of studied this, I guess. You know the the Republican <laughs> committee and everything else that if they have more candidates, it's going to bring more people out, you know, to vote. So that that's their argument. Where I think like, you know, like let's coalesce around one candidate, but then you're leaving all the rest to, yeah. to either way it looks like Newsom's approval rating or people I guess it, oh, it's it's crashing. It's it's yeah. you know? yeah. Hey, in closing hey, here, I just wanted to say, um, you know, it, it, this is a very expensive, and I don't want to ask for money, but if you can go to the red, white, and blueprint, and you know, help support us. You know, buy some swag, um, buy a VIP yeah. membership. You know, none of us are making anything at this. We're sacrificing everything, and and just you know, so if and you go a there that goes and support this. us, yeah. you know, it, it would just be great to help keep this thing going. Because and, 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 and watch the episode angles. five tonight when you're laying yeah, in bed yeah. at night. Heck yeah. Yeah. Sit on the couch, got a bag of popcorn, watch episode five. It is killer. It is yeah. really, really good. So you know? many bombs. And, and if you want to see so more, if you want bombs. episode six, do what John said. You know, yeah. go online, support us, buy a hat, buy a shirt, buy it for someone else, whatever. S buy one for Leonard. <laughs> and and hey, wait, 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 real quick, 30 seconds. What's this $500 deal the other side always talks about? Oh, yeah, we're selling stuff, but it's not $500 for a shirt. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we'll address next time. <laughs> Happy birthday, Woody. Happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday, you. Woody. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. <laughs>